This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. So what I want to do right now is give you a look at what's known as the Service Template Designer. And this is a tool that we're going to utilize to build out our services. So let's go ahead and bring up here the VMM console. So we do all of this inside of uh, VMM. But the place where we want to be is in the library. So let's go ahead and click on the library workspace here. Now, inside of the VMM library, we have templates and profiles. So the profiles are typically defining the configuration of an individual uh, virtual machine, for the most part. Things like hardware profiles that define the hardware spec of a virtual machine, guest operating system profiles for uh, configuring sort of the automated installation settings of an operating system inside of a single virtual machine. And then application profiles and SQL Server profiles for certain applications and database components that will live inside of a single virtual machine. We combine all of those into a virtual machine template. You can see we have one virtual machine template here called Windows 2008 R2. So it's got certain things defined in it and we can use that to create a new virtual machine. Then just above that we have our service templates. We've got a number of services that have already been defined, but we're going to define a new one. So if I say to create a new service template, that'll bring up the service template designer. Now notice the templates um, or the, uh, the canvases that we can choose from here. Different types of patterns, a blank pattern, so I'm just starting from scratch, a single machine, or a two-tier or three-tier application. Now a three-tier application is like the services that I've been describing where I perhaps have a service, like SharePoint is a service, SharePoint is a service, but it runs across three tiers. There's the web front end, there's the middle tier application logic running on, on a different server, and the back end database systems running on a different server again. So three servers, or in this case three virtual machines, work together as a three tier application to provide a single service called SharePoint. Now, we're not going to do this for SharePoint, but we will do it for our line of business applications. Many of our line of business applications follow that exact same web, middle tier app, and back end database logic. So let's use that as a template. And what are we going to call it? Uh, we'll call it my uh, line of business app one. Line of business app. Click OK. Now, what that's going to do is going to put these elements onto our canvas, which is in this main area here. So we begin in a diagram form, we begin to see what our um, environment is going to look like. Now the way this canvas works, and we get things on the screen here in such a way, is we've got elements that we can select, such as the first tier, the second tier server. So clearly these tiers represent a server or maybe even more than one server. First tier might be my web app. Okay, second tier might be some sort of .NET application code in the middle. Third tier might be my database. Notice that down below we get some details and some properties where I can name the tier, give it a description, some other properties that we'll look at, depending on what I select. If I select at this top level, that's the name of the service as a whole. And so I can name it, I can specify an owner, specify some priorities and descriptions and so on. All the way down to the bottom will be a virtual network card, a NIC, network interface card, where we can specify things like IP settings and MAC addresses and bandwidth controls for every one of these network cards. Okay, currently, as it says, it's not connected. It's because it's not currently connected to any type of a virtual network. Okay. Now all of these tiers then have properties. Now let me um, minimize some of this so we can see our canvas a little bit easier. 
So here's the first tier. Now starting at the bottom, you'll notice uh, hardware. Just like a real computer, at the very lowest level is hardware, like for instance CPU. Above that would be the operating system, and above that would be any applications. The combination of hardware, operating system, and applications make up a, uh, a deployable system. And then part of the hardware would be the network card. So let's come in here and take a look at the properties. And they'll open up in a separate window uh, here in just a moment. There it goes. Okay, so notice it took me to some general properties, some general properties about the first tier. Now, that first tier, those general properties, we could have also seen those properties down below. If you remember when we selected the first tier, we could see it in that sort of lower half of the screen, but this is another place where I can come. And one of the things about it is the, the, whether the tier can be scaled out or not. So let's say I want to change the name, and this is going to be the LOB app one web front end tier. Okay? Now, can it be scaled out? The maximum instance count is five. What that means is if I build out a load balancer, then as a web front end, there's no unique data on our web front ends. People connect to web front ends, and if they're load balanced, I can have as many as I need in my behind my load balancer in order to uh, scale this farm out. I've got so many people connecting to this web service. So that's what that's referring to. But we started at the lowest level with hardware configuration. So I can come in here and I can specify, you know, one CPU is not enough. I want it to be two CPUs. 512 megabytes of RAM is not enough. I want it to be, uh, you know, two gig of RAM. And then there's other hardware settings that we can configure here that are all the, the same hardware settings you would see if you were just simply creating a new virtual machine. So after we look at the hardware settings, the next in the layer would be operating system settings, where we can specify using wildcards if we wanted to, uh, specify a computer name, administrator password, a product key, time zone settings, and so on. Okay, so there's a lot here. When we look in more detail at operating system profiles, we'll go into these in a bit more detail, you know, like for instance, join, joining a domain or a work group. Another thing that we can specify are uh, things that you would normally do in Windows through Server Manager, like adding roles and features. So for instance, if this really was going to be a web front end, I would probably want to add the web server role. And so I can do that. And I can specify other, you know, sort of sub-elements uh, of that. Do I want ASP.NET? Do I want application development? Do I want some of these features and so on? Okay, I might want all of that. Same thing to do with the management tools. Uh, IIS Management Console, I might want that and some other management tools and so on. So I pick and choose uh, the elements of the web server role that I want to incorporate and maybe even the application server role, which is a part of Server Manager as well like the .NET framework, distributing transactions, and so on. So I might check a few of those to make sure that they are being deployed as a part of uh, the operating system. Now let's go ahead and click OK. And notice on our canvas, once this clears out here, notice on the canvas it's going to reflect now, at a high level, the hardware changes that we just made. Okay, what that means is that instead of showing, you know, what we had before, which is one processor and 512 meg, I can see two CPUs and two gig, and I would begin to see some of the other stuff. Now, if I wanted to add applications, I can do that as well. And that, again, brings up the wizard and jumps me to the application configuration, which happened to be right where we left off. I can start to add applications different types of application, maybe a web application that's supposed to be added in as a package to that IIS component so that when this finally does get deployed as a template, all of these elements are there. Now, let me just cancel out for now. On the back end, if this were going to be a database and we were going to add applications to that uh, database environment, 
then the application configuration would be a SQL Server data tier application instead of a web application, probably. And also, you'll notice you have a section for SQL Server configuration. So if we create a new one, we can add a SQL Server deployment, and that'll help us to go through and define when this service is used. This is what the instance name should be. This is the product key for SQL. Uh, these are the configurations and service accounts to utilize when we deploy out SQL. So there's a lot that we can do here as we build out all three tiers. Now one of the things too was to get this connected to uh, a network of some sort. So on my front end, in this application front end, one of the things I skipped over in uh, hardware configuration was network. So we've got this network card and it says that it's not connected. So I actually want it to be connected to a specific logical network called external network. So let's make sure that the web front end is connected to our external network. And we'll click OK again. Now notice it added something to the canvas. It added something here called external network. Now I don't like it all the way up there. I'm going to drag it down, put it somewhere on my screen where I can more easily uh, see it. And there it is. So I can tell that it's connected to an external network. Now, all three tiers I probably want connected to the same network. You'll notice up here in our canvas that instead of using the selector tool, I might want to use the connector tool. And this could be a way that I could quickly just drag a connection here and make sure that these networks are also connected without having to open up their properties. Makes it a little bit quicker for me to be able to get in there. Another thing that I could do is the second tier that you see listed right here uh, has not been configured yet. So if I had an existing template, these are virtual machine templates now, not service templates. You can see that listed right there. I can drag that onto one of these tiers and it will set it up with all of the hardware operating system and application settings that are already defined in that template if I wanted to use it. Uh, dragging that in and making it a part of the environment. Okay, I can add load balancers. Um, I can add application host templates. I can even add machine tiers. So as I, as I click uh, adding a machine tier, it's going to pop up and say, well, what template do you want to use to add a tier into the environment? I don't need any more tiers. Three tiers is enough. But ultimately, what do I do? I got to save uh, this particular configuration. Now, it's not complete. I'm not taking the time at the moment to go through every uh, setting that you want to configure. But ultimately, what you end up with, if we go ahead and minimize that, is here is a service template. And there it is, LLB app 1. And it contains all of the elements that we defined in that designer that allow us to deploy a new service. So if someone said to uh, uh, configure a deployment related to this and they push it out, then it's going to create, in my case, three different virtual machines. But it's also going to pop up and ask a few questions as a part of that deployment. So if I'm a cloud subscriber, like my investment banking division or my fixed income division, if I'm a cloud subscriber, then I'm going to be presented with some options whenever I deploy a service like this. One of those options might be how many web front end servers do you want? If we left it as a configurable element, they might say they want three. They might say they want five or they might say they want one. We can leave in these services some elements to be configured. And if you ever need to go in and make changes again, you can come here and say open designer after you've highlighted that particular uh, element. You can also right click and choose Open Designer uh, to get there in order to go in and make changes to your service and your service template. All right, it's time for a pop quiz. Where would you create a service template? Is it A, Operations Manager, B, Orchestrator, C, Service Manager, or D, Virtual Machine Manager? And the answer is D, Virtual Machine Manager. 
This is the place where we can actually use the, the uh, service template designer and build together all the elements that make up a service in our uh, environment. Things like virtual machines, the applications, the operating systems, they all combine together to create a service that is a deployable resource. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.